So I'm kicking off a series where I have installed a secondary graphics card in my computer and I'm going to be launching Windows games in a virtual machine and getting native performance on anything. So PUBG, Fortnite, all these games that can't be played natively on Linux or through Wine, I'm going to be playing through what's called VFIO pass-through or GPU pass-through in a virtual machine. The very first step of this is installing a brand new graphics card, which I'm going over today. So the very first thing is installing this graphics card. However, this is meant for entertainment purposes, not so much educational purposes, because this is my personal machine. I'm installing this graphics card that's really not uh, something that is standard per se. So I am sticking with an AMD card, which I will be passing through to my Windows machines. It's only an RX 570, but it should work nonetheless. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do some funny things in this video. It is very much a real video, meaning it's going to be genuine. There's not going to be much edits. I'm just going to be speeding things up. So you're going to see all the bottlenecks, the road, you know, anything I'm going to run into, any issue I'm going to run into on this video is going to be displayed for you to see and just get a... a what it looks like to actually upgrade a normal PC because there is no bells and whistles. I don't have any custom loops or RGB lighting or very minimal, I should say, whatever comes factory with the computer um, because it is tucked underneath my desk for the most part and nobody ever really sees it. So it's not a showcase piece like many other channels. If you're looking for build guides and those types of things, that is not me. This is just strictly for this purpose. I just wanted to show the process. All right, so today is the day. We just got in our new graphics card. So I am in my living area. We're about to partake on an actual addition to this. I'm not sure it's gonna fit in this case. I, I really don't think it will, but I thought, hey, let's go ahead and make a video about adding the secondary graphics card and see what we get. All right, so I apologize ahead of time for the audio on this. I'm using a lav mic instead of my usual Blue Yeti, and I don't have as much post-processing going on. However, I kind of wanted to show this in a unique setting, and I couldn't really do it at my desk because there's just too much stuff on it, and I don't have enough room. Just to get that out of the way, I know the production quality is not quite the best, but I'm gonna go ahead, take apart this computer. I did do tie downs, but there's nothing fancy. There's no RGB lighting, so Linus is probably gonna throw up if he ever sees this video because it is very minimalistic. However, I've had this computer for two, three years, and I build them to where they just last and last and last, and I hide all the cables and the normal stuff that you'd come to expect out of someone that's worked on a computer for 20 years. Here comes the cat. Hey. I'm recording here, man. Not, not in front of the camera. No, no. See this? See this? This is the camera right here. You can't get in front of it. Okay, all right. Just so you know. And with that said, let's get into installing this graphics card. Now, prep work for this. I went ahead and put on some socks. I'm on carpet, so I made sure to rub my feet together have two layers so I get plenty of static electricity. Actually, I don't I, I don't think we're supposed to have static electricity. Oh well. So here's the problem is I have to find fit this card into this system, which I just don't see this happening, but let's go ahead and see how big the actual card what we're working with before I get too involved here. All right, as far as the card we're working with, it's going to be a brand new RX 570. 
I got two free games, Resident Evil 2 and Devil May Cry 5 with this uh, card. So pretty awesome, eight gigs. So it's kind of a no-brainer. I thought, hey, if there's a time to actually do VFIO pass-through, this is it. So that's what I got here. Um, the actual card size, that big, going into here. Which, that may not work. There's just no possible way that's going to work. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about this. Let's see. All right, as far as what we're working with here, this is the system I built um, about two and a half years ago. So there's a little bit of dust buildup. It does not look too bad. Um, I don't know if you're getting all this, but let's see if I can't focus a little. You can kind of see. And this is this monster video card. I mean, it's just huge. I had to dremel out all of this right in here, as you can see, just to get this one card to fit. And then in here, oh, let's see if I can't get a little closer look. There's a PCI up at the top, right below this one, and a PCI uh, right here. So PCIe, I got two spots to plug in here. That's a pretty tight fit as far as power supply. Let's zoom in a little. And that's what we're working with. So I got a 1,000 watt. That's plenty for two, uh, two graphics cards, not even SLI. So we're, we're good. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and start disassembling and uh, see what I can do as far as moving this card. All right. I know the camera angles here are not ideal. This is the best setup I can actually do with what I have here, guys. So um, I apologize ahead of time. I just want to kind of show the process of putting the card in and kind of give you an idea of what my computer looks like as far as setup and everything goes. So with that done, we're going to take our screwdriver. I have a support frame around my Vega 64 because this card is massive, just ridiculous. So we're going to take these screws out and remove the support frame and then I'm going to try and move this bottom card to the secondary PCI slot which I might see a performance decrease because of this because you have a 16x is the top slot that's why every graphics card goes in it uh, the bottom slot's typically 8x and or the bottom slot is typically like 4x or 8x since I have three PCI slots, I'm betting that secondary slot is 8x and the bottom slot is 4x. So I may end up losing some performance by doing this, um, but we will see. As far as bells and whistles, as you see, I have none. I don't do liquid cooling. I don't do any of that nonsense. I, I love watching the videos of the guys doing it, but uh, myself, I don't have the time to be uh, messing around with all that. I could do a closed loop and I have in the past, but I find, you know, as far as a uh, fan goes, if you get a nice knock to a setup, uh, you don't need to really do much with it, like practically ever, because those knock to fans just go and go and go, and the airflow is way better than the cheapo fans. So most of the fans in here are knock to a. I think there's a two on the top where I cheaped out and did some BS uh, no name company. So with that, let's go ahead and move this bottom card to the top and see what we get. And now that I'm looking at this, I might, do I dare try and put it in the middle slot? I don't know. I think so. I think we're going to dare. Yeah, it's 4x on the bottom, 8x in the middle. I think we're going to, I think we're going to try and do this. Let's let's make it happen. Let's make let's make that middle middle slot happen. Oh, that is a tight fit. But a fit nonetheless. All right. Wow. 
Okay. Well, it fit. But I am not sure on this whole setup. Man, I got to show you this. This is just ridiculous. All right. Check this out. Let me get up. <clears throat> All right, this is what we're looking at. This is a pretty tight fit. And this is without the brace guard on my RX-64. So I'm going to have to add that brace guard. This guy right here. This is the new card edition. There is no back plate. It's a cheap card. Well, I don't like it, but we're going to have to go with this. So with that done, I think we go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and try and brace this down and power it up after adding the secondary PCI power connector right, right above this as rock so once we get that we should be good to go so we'll uh we'll try this out and i'll see you on the flip side we're back um i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys kind of what i've done here as far as the standoff for the sapphire nitro plus that entire bracket which is yeah, it's just too big. I can't fit it in there. And if you wedge this between car or cards, you know, I'm afraid there might be some conduct conductivity. And you could probably fry this new card, especially it doesn't have a back plate or anything protecting its contacts. So that could be very, very bad. We're not going to do that. Uh, so what I ended up doing was cutting out a foam block from the garage, wrapping in an electrical tape, and then using a, some adhesive to give this card some support because it's so heavy it needs some support and i think this will actually work better than this guy right here the downside to doing that obviously is the time it took to construct that little block and i'm going to go ahead and zoom in on my good camera here and bring it down so you can kind of see what i'm talking about so zooming in here this is the fabricated block right here and I went ahead and cleaned it off, uh, glued that down. Uh, the white adhesive you see there should dry clear once it's finished. When that's done, it will be permanently in place. Obviously, I could scrape it off if need be. Um, however, this thing is just such a massive card, and it caused so much problems. I had to Dremel out part of my case just to get the thing to fit a couple years back. And now that I'm adding that, and the next part of this is just simply adding the new power cable i'm working on i don't know if you can see that or not back in there i'm working on feeding all that wire back so we'll just have one loop around and finish with the plug right here on the the new graphics card so i'm going to go ahead and feed this wire all the way through and make it look clean because we don't want any excess wires or just causing problems. I like to just blow these computers out really easy. And if you take the time and hide all your wiring, man, you just, you always just end up with a better performing PC in the long run. Drives me crazy when I see a bunch of wires. So I'm gonna slowly feed that through here. And voila. All right, it's so nice and snug. Um, I normally would zip tie this thing down, but uh, I don't think I'm gonna do that in this case because this cable is very taut, uh, not going anywhere. Has a good amount. My little standoff's already setting. Um, that'll probably take about an hour to set. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this here, um, start packing everything up, do one more zoom in, just, so you can see the final product and then I probably need to blow this out and actually clean it a little bit. But other than that, this is a very uh, simple install <laughs> other than our problem with our standoff and using a small case with this much horsepower. However, again, I'm a minimalist. 
and if as long as you hide all your cables, this isn't bad. I don't think there's really much quality to be gleaned. You should probably be watching uh, a build channel like Bitwit, Jay's Two Cents, those types of guys uh, do an excellent job with builds. Uh, far as me, I, I'm a minimalist. I use very budget stuff, no liquid cooling or anything like that, like I said. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up here. So that was it guys, that was installing the secondary graphics card. We got it done. I didn't think it would fit, but at the same time I wanted to try and it barely fit. If there was just another couple, probably millimeters on that graphics card, it would not a fit in the case. So that is pretty insane that it's such a snug fit. However, I've already been checking my thermals. It did increase my thermals on the big card, but to be expected because there's less room for it. It upped my thermals by about five to 10 Celsius, which is definitely acceptable considering how crammed it is in this PC. I do have five different case fans and I have evened out the air quality so there's not a negative or a positive flow in the machine. As much intake air comes in, just as much goes out. And I've, I've measured that just to make sure you have one, a long lasting PC, you don't have a huge amount of dust buildup and you have good performance. So why this PC wasn't sexy by any terms, uh, it is probably a lot better than many PCs you see built or definitely PCs you buy in a store just because I do measure many of these things and again, I don't really care about the look. I care about the performance. I care about what it can do for me. And that's my main thing with the PC. And uh, you know, I'm probably gonna get some hate by how sloppy this was because it was very sloppy. And I did do some stuff as far as I didn't wanna take all my socks and that type of crap. So I really just did not care that much. And I was being very careful with touching the edges, not physically touching any contacts on the board. Yes, if you're wearing socks on carpet, that's dumb, don't do it. But at the same time, I was very careful as far as how I touched and I didn't make direct contact with any contacts on the board. I don't like touching the contacts. I come from uh, an era where touching the contacts was almost a death sentence for that motherboard. And you know, I see many YouTubers nowadays do it and it just makes me cringe every time. Uh, almost more than wearing socks on carpet. <laughs> and with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like videos like this and would like to contribute, Come join me on Patreon or you can donate directly on ChrisTitus.com and I'll see you in the next video.